Namaste. So after hearing about the infinite, Narada asks, on what does the infinite rest? Now, this is a typical newbie question, huh? because we are all used to dealing with objects, things, and everything, every object rests on something, is the effect of something, is dependent on something. For example, fire. Fire is dependent on three things, fuel, air, and temperature. It needs these three things to be fire. And without them, or any one of them, you don't get any fire. The three have to come together in a specific way to cause fire. In one sense, all fire is linked to or related to all other fire because it takes fire to make fire. You have to strike a match to light a fire in your stove, for example. So then, this infinite, what does it rest on? What is its cause? What is it made of? What creates it? How does it sit? Where does it sit? And the answer to all of these is, it sits in its own majesty. But that's just a superficial answer. That's just for the people who have to, uh, because they can't think outside the box of cause and effect. They have to have a story that involves a doer, an action, and an object. They can't think any other way, literally. Their mind just goes, gluck, can't process it. But the teacher, Sanat Kumara, is here to tell us that actually it doesn't need any of that. That it is not dependent on anything. It is independent, self-situated, and seated only in itself. That's Brahman. That's the Absolute. And this is what people don't want to hear, unfortunately, or can't hear, because they don't have the ontological structure of Advaita to prop it up, to explain it, to tell a story about it, so that we, with our, you know, uh, uh, Mark V primate brains, or <laughs> whatever they are, can understand it, can grasp it, can grok it at all. Otherwise, it stops all of our thought, and uh, we get the hypothalamus fires off into the adrenals, and <laughs> we get fight or flight, and so we do something inappropriate. Come up with a stupid question, or you do whatever it takes to stop the ontic conversation. But in this case, because the disciple is so extraordinary, like in verses 9 and 10, he admitted that he doesn't know the meaning of the words. Thou, meaning you, art, meaning exists or has the being of, and that, which relates to Brahman. So he is now first defining Brahman. What is Brahman? The infinite. Now, there can only be one infinite. Get this through your head. This is the one grand mistake that forever screwed up Western thought. And now that Western thought has become the de facto standard all over the world, the default context for every conversation, Everybody thinks wrongly about infinities. There can only be one infinity, the absolute, or God, or Tao, or Brahman, or whatever you want to call it. That, <laughs> that absolute has no foundation. It rests on nothing. It is dependent on no other thing. 
It is independent, self-situated, self-powered, and all of that good stuff. By its nature of being infinite. Because infinity means everything. Huh? Everything that you can name or perceive or even imagine is included within infinity. So there's no room for another infinity, at least of the same type, of the same class. See, there are different classes, different types of infinities. See, the Leibniz, I mean, he's the bad guy in this story. Leibniz came up with number theory and infinities uh, that are scoped or conditioned or limited, limited infinities. For example, the set of all odd numbers, whole numbers, then the set of all even numbers. So these are supposed to be infinite because there are uncountably many of them. Now, does it really make sense to say an uncountable number of numbers? That's pretty abstract, isn't it? And furthermore, the set is restricted to numbers only, 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 9, etc. So that means they're not as infinite as the infinite of everything, or even the set of all numbers, which is also an infinite set, but it's deemed to be bigger in one sense than the set of odds or the set of evens because the scope, the, the classification of what goes in that set is supposed to be bigger. But it's all bullshit. It's all, <laughs> it's all comparing apples and oranges. The infinity is the only one possible because there is nothing else but it. It includes everything. So there's no other thing for it to be dependent on or to be the cause of or to be seated on. Therefore, the infinity, Brahman, Nibbana, Tao, whatever you want to call it, is and can only be one. And these other infinities are only small infinities, not, not real infinities. They're very highly conditioned, very highly limited. You could say they're upadis because they're only about numbers, which are abstractions. And then they're about sets of numbers, which are further abstractions of a specific types of numbers, which is another abstract. So the triply abstracted off into nothing means their whole value is ultimately zero. They are useless. Yes, I know within mathematics, you can come up with all kinds of ways to use this stuff. But that's also an abstraction based on a pile of other abstractions. Huh? The whole thing disintegrates when you realize there's only one real infinity. So, what about that infinity? <laughs> well, it's in front, it's behind, it's above, it's below, it's on either side, it's everywhere, it's everything. It's you! Tatvamasi! Here we go again, right? So this is the phrase that this whole thing is about. And in Vakya Vritti especially is going to go deep into the phrase and define all the three terms in it exhaustively. And so this is the key to actually attaining enlightenment is understanding the definitions of the terms. I've been saying this for 12 years. <laughs> Nobody has really taken me up on it.
but Shankaracharya did in his Vakyavritti. So, now I have a buddy. <laughs> well, I've always had a buddy, but anyway, this buddy is going to define these three words so clearly and so exhaustively that there remains no longer any question in anyone's mind as to what they really mean. And that immediately leads to self-realization because that is what self-realization is. <laughs> the knowledge that I am Brahman and nothing else. So now you might say, well, but there's Nirguna Brahman with no qualities, and then there's Saguna Brahman with all qualities. How do you explain that? Well, it's simple. We talked about these numerical sets as being, you know, pseudo-infinities, right? Well, the Brahman with qualities, the Saguna Brahman or Shakti or Maya, is nothing but an infinite set of upadis, constantly changing. Upadis of upadis, <laughs> I mean... You know, she generates all possibilities of upadis covering Brahman. And Brahman then gets to taste them and get self-realized beyond them. In other words, Brahman's own self-realization, Brahman's own enlightenment, consists in becoming conditioned and then getting realized and breaking the conditioning penetrating the conditioning, and recovering his original being and nature. So this is the game, folks. This is reality. This is what is going on, actually. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. Because the Upanishads give us the raw, naked truth. And everyone else is simply interpreting them according to their own agendas. See, that's why we don't start any organization or foundation or ashram or temple or whatever, even a club. Huh? I mean, the, the maximum thing is the Consciousness Research Center, which is just a name. You know, it's a fictitious name for me. <laughs> I'm researching my own consciousness and I'm sharing the results with you. That's all it is. It's, you know, and it's got to be that way if what I'm telling you and what I'm sharing with you is to remain unbiased without the superimposition of any other values or agendas, but self-realization. So, yeah, you can have self-realization right now, right this instant, if you simply understand tattvamasi, this is what I'm telling you. And this is what all of our work is dedicated to uh, making arise within you this understanding or this definition or this view of what is non-duality, what is Brahman, who am I? You know, you can state it any number of different ways. But what it comes down to is realizing that the self formerly known as you is actually just a little uh, bubble in the froth of a wave of Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.